Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is the Tank Museum at Bollington, for those of you who have not been. Um, those of you who are long-time viewers of the channel will uh, possibly remember that we recently did uh, a charity build for the museum and I took part in uh, a video of theirs. And they invited me and my family down to the museum to uh, have a look around. So uh, that's what we did, and I thought I'd show you a few highlights of, uh, of our visit. So, let's get on with it. Now, I'm not going to go through everything that we did. Uh, I'm not going to show you everything in the whole museum, because basically, if I did that, there'd be no point in you going to look at it yourself. Um, so really, the uh, what I'm going to do here is just give you a, a little overview of, of some of the things that we looked at, and um, you know some of the, the good work that they do and uh, hopefully persuade you to take a visit there yourself uh, or at least go online and support them they have a, a nice shop actually they've got tons of stuff in it <laughs> which yes we did buy some stuff um but yeah it's uh, it's a cracking place to visit the um they have a, a very good uh world war one exhibit um as you saw at the beginning there the uh, the tank mark one uh i i took just something to give you a little bit of a taster because I you know, didn't want to give you too many spoilers, but it's uh, it's a fantastic display. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll just show you a few of the things uh, that we looked at uh, and uh, give you a little flavour of uh, what's going on in there. One of the things I did want to point out actually here was uh, I was I quite like this um, the fact they had the the scorpion and the simmer to park next to each other uh, because it very ably demonstrates. Uh, the difference between the two vehicles because they're basically the same chassis the only real difference is the armament and uh, if you ever want to be able to tell the difference between the two easily uh, the scorpion is the one with the big gun so the scorpion has the big sting so just a little <laughs> that was the way we were always taught to differentiate between a scorpion and a scimitar is uh, it's a little tank with a big sting so uh, anyway yes moving on uh, this is one of the exhibits my son was particularly keen on. Um, my son's name is Michael. And uh, when he came across this Sherman that was always called, also called Michael, he uh, he was quite taken with that. So uh, that's why he's standing next to it. Although quite where, why he's wearing an RAF t-shirt, I haven't quite figured out yet. But there you go. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. My son Michael with the Sherman, Michael. Now this is an exhibit I was particularly interested in. It's, uh, it's a Mark III Centurion that's been basically sliced in half so you can see the insides of it and uh, I was I was quite fascinated with this from an engineering standpoint it was um, how exactly did they cut that in half so <laughs> answers on a postcard to the usual address if you know still it was a fascinating exhibit so this is where we moved into an area that was more the World War II side of things um, and one of the things that's always struck me uh, about World War II armor and uh, I think it's quite ably displayed in these pictures, is, is how much more capable uh, the German armour looked to everyone else's. Uh, <laughs> it seems like a lot of the early Allied armour was just like cobbled together. Um, but when you look at some of the, uh, the, the German stuff, I mean, here we've got the, the Panther. Um, I mean, look at it. I mean, it's a beast of a thing. Um, obviously, I built one of those a little while ago as well. Um, but yeah, they're just so much more capable. And again, when we come to this, the, the Tiger, I mean, even though they were built sort of fairly quickly to start with, um, it just, it looks like an efficient fighting vehicle. Whereas a lot of the uh, the early, um, and indeed some of the later uh, Allied stuff, just, it looks kind of clunky in comparison. <laughs> so... But uh, yeah, it's just something I've always noticed about the um, about the difference between the sort of German and the Allied armor is that the, the German armor just looks a lot more capable and in many cases was a lot more capable. Um, I think in a lot of cases it was just sheer weight of numbers that uh, that actually, you know, sort of turned the tide and of course the various political factors as well. So, but yeah, just a, an observation of mine. And here we have a, a couple of examples of uh, more modern armour. We did look at the modern stuff, but I didn't take that many pictures. Um, but there's something I think you're going to be more interested in, which is this, the, uh, the Vehicle Conservation Centre. Uh, this is basically um, where they keep all the vehicles that are not 
currently on display um and it's a huge huge hangar and uh, i think there's i think there's the space for like 150 vehicles in there um and you can't actually go in and, and look at it all but you can just, there's like a viewing platform up above that you can uh you can stand on and look at all this stuff and it's um it's absolutely fascinating because obviously the they keep all this stuff uh, and you know restore it as much as possible uh but it's no good doing that and then just leaving it all outside to go rusty again so that's why they they built this huge hangar basically just to keep all these vehicles out of the weather as much as possible which is a, a great idea um but yeah it was uh it was quite interesting just to stand up there and just look at this this field of, of armor just sat there <laughs> and see it's like you know different makes and models and all different generations of vehicles and different classes all just you know put wherever there was space for them it was uh, actually really interesting to look at and to finish with i thought you might like like this this is the uh the sherman tank from the film fury um which was uh just parked out out of the weather in the uh, in the conservation center and uh i believe they do take it out and, and drive it around now and again so uh, it's well worth having a look out for that but um yeah i thought that might be of interest to some of you so yeah that was our visit to the uh, to the tank museum so a big thank you to uh, to the Tank Museum for giving us that opportunity. It was a fascinating day out. And if you have any kind of interest in armour at all, it's, it's well worth a visit. Um, have a look at their website because they do regularly have uh, like driving days and things and displays where they, they take various vehicles out and drive them around so you can see them in action, as it were. And uh, as I said, they do have a, a very well stocked shop <laughs> with lots of uh, lots of models and, and other bits and pieces, um, including a uh, plush Panzerfaust, which I was <laughs> I was very tempted to get one, I must admit. Uh, but yeah, it was a, a great day out and uh, well worth a visit if you happen to be in the area. My kids really enjoyed it. Um, the missus enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So, yeah, definitely worth a visit. So, yeah. Um, Thank you guys uh, for watching. Uh, another big thank you to my top tier patrons, uh, Amy, Edwin and Howard. Uh, your support is always appreciated, guys. And um, I'll see you on the next video. So thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.